Hello, I'm Dr. Lonnie Herman and welcome back to this website so you can understand what causes your chronic condition. And we're going to share with you some information that you probably never have heard of before, although it's been around for over a decade. And this is 2012 that I'm making this video, February of 2012. And, um, you know, most of us have, ever since childhood, had a cold, had a fever. The doctor has given us antibiotics, right? And you probably think that you need antibiotics for a cold or the so-called flu, even though you don't know if it's a flu for real, or you have a strep throat or you've had a staph infection, or you went in the hospital and they had to give you antibiotics or something, or you had a, a, you know, you had a root canal or you had a cavity filled and they had to give you, uh, or you had a tooth pulled and they had to give you antibiotics, um, or, or however the case, you probably have once in your life taken some antibiotic medication, right? Okay, well let's understand what these antibiotics do. Even things like penicillin can do this. Amoxicillin can do this what I'm going to share with you now. So sit back, I've got this, this video is going to take a few minutes and we're going to get into some different information. So I just want you to just sit back and relax and grasp this. Maybe you can get a pen, get a paper, write down a couple of things so you can look this up for yourself on the internet. I've got some websites that you can go and research. There are some brilliant PhDs who have come out and stated this as well. Okay? So one of our uh, parts of our program in here to get you well is to find out if this is, which most likely it is, in your body and we've got to be able to eradicate it. Because when we don't eradicate what I'm going to share with you in this video, you're going to have a chronic immune fight and you're going to get a weak immune system so these chronic diseases can develop. They can, uh, whether it's MS or fibromyalgia or Lou Gehrig's disease, or diabetes, or neuropathy, or rheumatoid arthritis, the list goes on, thyroid diseases like Graves' disease and Hashimoto's, whether it's a stroke, cardiovascular disease, um, you're gonna be looking at this as one of the factors. It's called biofilm, biofilm. In their natural habitat, 99% of all bacteria live as a community and attached to surfaces, attached to tissues in your body with biofilms. According to the National Institute of Health, 80% of all infections in humans are related to biofilms. Discovery opens the door to attacking biofilms that cause chronic infections. And you can read this, this is from Berkeley, uh, University of Berkeley in California, uh, July of 2012 is where I got that statement from. So biofilms are, are, are these castles, are these, these slimy, poisonous, uh, uh, snotty, literally kind of layers that these bacteria create. And they create these layers for a reason, because they don't want to die, they want to protect themselves, they want to hide under these biofilms, and they communicate, and they can have a party, and they can reproduce, and your immune system and your antibiotic can't do a thing about it. Biofilm leads to chronic disease and neurodegeneration. The popular view of bacteria is that they are free living organisms easily kept in check by antibiotics, Dr. Berg said. But scientists now realize that bacteria spend most of their lives in colonies or biofilms, even in the human body. While single bacteria may be susceptible to antibiotics, the films can be 1,000 times more resistant and most can only be removed surgically. Well, you don't have to have surgery to remove these. There are other ways, but you're getting this from a medical doctor who uh, only follows that type of program. Um, so understand something here. What they said was, in, in other words, antibiotics can't get through the biofilm. It's so strong that these bacteria become more resistant because they're building a castle, they're building armor over themselves. Another statement that came out of his paper, implants such as pacemakers, stents, and artificial joints, like a hip replacement, let's say, occasionally become infected by bacteria that form biofilms. Showing in the future, showing in the future, not even immediately, can be the cold, a cold that you get, the flu, chronic sinus problems, cystic fibrosis, because of the biofilms from these bacteria 
that the antibiotics didn't kill. They actually, the antibiotics actually helped create these biofilms. I'm gonna tell you how in a minute. You can go online and, and type in a 3D architecture of microbial cities. A great animated uh, video about these, uh, these bacterial uh, biofilms. Let me read all this to you here. Bacteria also form permanent, mostly lifelong biofilms in the mucus-filled lungs of cystic fibrosis patients and are responsible for the chronic lung infections that lead to early death. Although long-lasting antibiotic treatment helps, I don't know how, it cannot eradicate the infection completely. To study a biofilm formed by uh, cholera bacteria, Burke built his own super-resolution microscope uh, in UC Berkeley Stanley Hall, he discovered that over a period of about six hours, a single bacteria laid down a glue to attach itself to a surface, then divided and divided again, and making a permanent cement connecting to the tissue, whether it's the intestines or the heart or a blood vessel or a muscle or the stomach or the liver. It's like building a brick and mortar building, he said. The bacteria secreted a protein that encased the cluster like the shell of a building. It's like the bacteria is building itself a castle. The clusters are separated by channels that allow nutrients in and waste out. So the bacteria can have these biofilms that they make or have little channels that they can let their nutrients in so they can eat and survive and it lets the waste out but it doesn't let your immune system get in and the antibiotics can't get in. I'm gonna tell you how antibiotics are linked to this in just a minute. And if we can find a drug, and that's what they wanna do, if we can find a drug that can uh, remove the building as a whole, that's what they're doing. So you know what medicine's all about, the next drug that could be on the market to do the wonderful thing. Bacteria that attach to surfaces aggregate in a hydrated matrix, we don't have to understand about that, formation of these communities and their inherent resistance to antimicrobial agents are at the root of many persistent and chronic bacterial infections. So this came out of Science Magazine in 1990, May 21st. Bacterial biofilms are common cause of persistent infections. What this statement just said here is antimicrobial agents are at the root of these persistent chronic bacterial infections. So what does that mean? Let's understand this. Now I'm going to get down to what we know about these biofilms that allow these chronic diseases to stay and linger and cause you pain, causing joint deterioration and osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis, causing spinal degeneration, leading to strokes, leading to cardiovascular disease and high blood pressure, leading to all kinds of ailments, whether it's MS, whether it's cancer, whether it's fibromyalgia, whether it's, you name it, neuropathy. Antibiotics, when they go into, a, uh, uh, into the body and they're not really programmed properly because there's overuse of antibiotics now, these antibiotics get into the body and they go after whatever kind of supposedly abnormal cell, that they, not that they have a computer chip on them and know what to recognize, it's some kind of chemical antibiotic. And when it attacks a bacteria, what it does is it divides the cell wall. So that, the, the, the shell of the bacteria, it's got its living parts inside, the shell explodes. And the internal contents of the bacteria stay alive. And it just comes out and it sticks onto some other tissue in the body. And that's when that bacteria, which is known as a cell wall deficient bacteria, you can write that down and look it up. It is the cause of many of the chronic illnesses out there now cell wall deficient bacteria. What does that mean? Antibiotic destroys the cell wall, the cell wall degrades and disappears and the inside of the bacteria comes out and it sticks somewhere else. Now it has been known or become a cell wall deficient bacteria. So your strep throat that you took antibiotics for never really killed the strep. Even though you seem to overcome it with the antibiotics in a couple of weeks or three weeks. But that strep is likely to form another strain of itself. And it's now, which can be 14 different strains is what I've learned about strep, it's now a cell wall deficient bacteria. And in order for that bacteria that has no wall around it anymore to protect itself, what does it do? It creates a biofilm. It creates a poisonous 
a, a protective barrier around it. And now it can reproduce underneath. And when it gets the signal out and says, hey, the coast is clear, it can actually travel to the next area where there's weak tissue in the body, plant itself, and lay more of this biofilm matrix. And you know what your immune system does? It notices that that matrix, that biofilm, is bad. It notices it's poisonous. It notices it's toxic. And it tries to eradicate it. It sends out your own immune soldiers to go and eradicate that biofilm. But guess what? It can't do it. Your body can't get rid of the biofilm on its own. Antibiotics can't get rid of these bacteria. They're actually making them become worse strains of themselves. And they're actually now, instead of having just the bacteria, now you have the bacteria as a different strain and the biofilm to contend with. So there's more inflammation because this can start in the stomach, in the gut, and it gets through a leaky gut. It gets into the blood vessels. It can go into the joints. It can go into the brain. It has been linked in research to Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and a number of different disorders, stroke and heart disease. Biofilm video. You want to see this is a great montage by several different PhDs. And it's called, What Are Bacterial Biofilms? It's a six minute video. Look at that. It really will shed more light if I haven't done the job good enough for you in this video. And also, you've got to take it one step further. And I've talked about in other videos here about dental procedures. There was a dentist, Dr. Weston Price, back in the 20s, who discovered that root canals are bad for the body. He discovered that root canals are breeding grounds for bacteria. A cracked tooth is a breeding ground for bacteria. And those bacteria can come out of a root canal and rummage through the body and go around and, like scavengers and plant themselves in tissues. And they start creating biofilms. The root canal is not your friend. You want, you don't believe me, what I just said. I've said this before in other videos you've gotten. Type in these words, whether you Google or Yahoo, however you search, dangers of root canals. Read about that. And then go back and look at this film about biofilm. And type in these words, antibiotics and biofilms, antibiotics and bacteria, and see. Real research not funded by drug companies shows that it dissolves the biofilms and it leads to a worsening infection. Um, there is research that came out of a journal of applied microbiology. Now remember what I said before, that doctor from UC Berkeley said, we need to find the drug that's going to eradicate the biofilm. Well, it's already been done. They don't need to get a drug, but the drug companies can not patent a natural thing. So they're going to look for a drug so they can make money on this new discovery that's really been out for a while that they don't tell the public about right now unless you know where to research it or you listen to somebody like me who's already done the research for you. Journal of Applied Microbiology said that allicin, which is an extract of garlic, the most potent part of the garlic, garlic, uh, that it had activity against the biofilm formation from staph infection. Journal of, Micro, of, uh, excuse me, Journal of Applied Microbiology, uh, volume 95 in October of 2003, pages 709 to 711, their results showed, the results confirmed that antibacterial effect of allicin, allicin also diminished the biofilm formations of the staph disease. Getting down to the bottom line of what all this says. We use a very potent, pesticide, chemical-free, radiation-free form of allicin in practice. And there are different methods to do to apply to your body in three different manners to be able to rid the biofilm so we can get rid of the infection. Because you can't get rid of the infection if you don't get rid of the biofilm, folks. We've got to be able to do both. Okay? So we've got products here that will help us do that. Um, and that's basically it. We don't need to talk about this, but just understand something, that the more that these infections linger, the more that these biofilms linger, it creates more inflammation. And more inflammation in the body creates more free radicals. More free radicals on stable cells lead to more oxidative stress and cancers, tissue death, cell degeneration, and it also leads to something called excitotoxins formation. That also leads to tissue death, foggy brain, cancer, you name it, okay? So I look forward to helping you. Thank you for letting me come into your home and share this information about biofilm. You may have to stop this 
and watch it again. Replay it again a second or third time. Get this down. I look forward to helping you. Thank you.